everybody this is the last part of my lip product declutter series i ended up having to refilm this because i lost all of the footage but that actually kind of worked out because in the meantime i ended up getting like two new lip products three actually if you include this thing and so i figured it would be good to at least include them in this reckoning and then be able to show you guys the full picture of what my lip product storage looks like now so in this final section we're going to be doing all of my rich pinks berries and oxblood colors and of course all of my lip glosses anyway without any further ado let's get it let's do all of the lipsticks first so the odd ones out are actually probably these two lip products. So the friend who sent me Halo Wine Charm, who is right here, as well as those Jouer highlighters, she also sent me this mini size of a YSL lipstick. It's in the shade 01. There's no name on the bottom of the lipsticks, but I'll put the name over here somewhere. And she basically ended up sending this to me because she has the full size of this, and so she really has no use for this mini, and she knows I love red lipsticks. Here is what that lipstick looks like. It's basically like a very glossy, neutral tone red. It's not particularly blue based, it's not particularly orange based. It's definitely shinier than every other red lipstick I own, which is why I'm sort of marginally intrigued by it. I'm gonna try it out, I'm gonna see if I like it more than my current reds. I'm going to see if having like a shiny, creamy red lipstick is something that I actually care about, or if I'm more into like matte finishes for my red lipsticks. So for now, it's going to stay in this like purgatory capacity. The other odd one out in terms of a color family is this. This was given to me by a friend who went to East Asia earlier this year and who ended up getting a lot of stuff. So she went shopping at a bunch of different places where you could buy Korean cosmetics and she bought a bunch of stuff from Etude House that she gave to me, Innisfree, which she mostly kept for herself, and 3CE. And these two were products that she had initially bought for herself, but they ended up not really working for her, so she decluttered them to me. So this is the 3CE Style Nanda Velvet Lip Tint, and it's in the shade Taupe which quite frankly is a huge misnomer of a name. There is absolutely nothing taupe about this lip product at all. It's basically like a brick tone brown. So that is this color sort of spread across in an even layer across my hand. But the way that most of these velvet tints are often worn is by kind of blurring and blotting out the color. Oh, there she goes. And when you do that, you realize that it's actually a much softer reddish brown color. So the idea is you would kind of put one layer on your lips that's all sort of blotted and blurred out. And then if you wanna create a gradient lip right towards the center of your lip, you would add back in a bit of the original product and slightly smudge it out so that there was like a very clear gradient from the center of your lip going out towards your outer lip. This is really different from a standard liquid lipstick formula. I would say that the closest thing to it would be a NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. In fact, I'm one of those people who I really love the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams because they tend to give me this sort of K-beauty, blurry, blotted lip vibe. And this is an actual Korean product that achieves that. On my friend, it was just a little too dark, a little too reddish brown. She felt like it kind of made her look really goth, whereas on me, this is like a pretty neutrally fall color. I really enjoyed this the couple of times that I've used it so far because I do really love that effect of like a blurred, blotted lip. And this is truly like a very pretty and flattering shade of reddish brown so she's gonna stay for now okay so here are all of the sort of like darker pinks in my collection so the first category that i kind of tend to divide these in is a category i like to call rich pinks now at the start of my no my year i only had one lipstick in the rich pink category i had decluttered literally everything else and i was just down to this one and that would be this product right here this is the bite multi stick in the shade mochi so on my hand, it is the second color from the top. And this is what I mean whenever I talk about a rich pink. Basically, not like a deep berry oxblood color, but also not like a neutral tone pink. It's a pink with richness and depth and vibrancy. A pink that stands out much more than the average neutral, rosy, mauvey pink color, but which doesn't have like the depth and gothiness of a berry tone pink. 
This is one of two Bite multi-sticks I own. The Bite multi-sticks are traditionally able to be used on the lips, cheeks, and eyes. I've never actually used this on my eyes. I mostly tend to use this on my lips. Every once in a while, I've also used it on my cheeks for like a very beautiful and intense like pinkish red look. I love, love, love this color. I recently changed my profile picture on YouTube, but if you guys remember my old one, the lipstick color I was wearing in it was actually this one. It was mochi. And this has stood the test of time. This used to be a very very full category at one point in my life because I was obsessed with these sort of rich pink colors and I used to wear them almost every single day and after years and years of successive decluttering, I realized that this is my favorite one. And I love this so much that it's really sort of cut my desire to buy any other lipsticks similar to this, because I always just think automatically to myself, would I rather wear XYZ new lipstick that's vaguely similar to this, or would I rather wear Bite Mochi? And the answer is always, I would rather wear this. I know I look good in this, it's a very very beautiful color, and for me this is a color that transcends all of the seasons. Because it's just this sort of very pretty like mid-tone pinkish red color, I can make it look appropriate for winter and summer, spring and fall. So this is 100% staying. To use the language of Marie Kondo, like this sparks so much joy. The newer acquisition in the category of rich pinks is this 3CE Take A Layer Multi Pot. Ironically, much like this Bite Multi Stick, this is also a multi-use product. It's meant to be used on the lips, cheeks, and the eyes. Like, I don't know if you're able to see on the packaging, the model is wearing it on her eyes, cheeks, and her lips. So this looks almost like a cream blush in the pan. and. On my arm, it's this first one here. It's considerably lighter and less rich of a color than Mochi by Bite, but it's still more vibrant of a pink than all of the other neutral pinks I own. So I figured it just belongs in this category. I haven't really had much time to play around with this product yet. What little like use and wear and tear that you're seeing on this product was either my friend trying it out for herself and realizing that this really doesn't work, or me swatching it on the back of my hand to determine whether this was a color I wanted to experiment with or not. I've already kind of discussed this in my blush declutter, so I'm going to link that up in the cards and you can watch me talk about it in a bit more detail. I will say that neither of these formulas, neither this 3CE Take A Layer Multi Pot nor the Bite Multi Stick in Mochi are going to be for you if you really really hate a matte lipstick because both of these are to some extent kind of powdery and I think that's because they're multi sticks they're meant to be used on both the eyes and the cheeks and not just the lips and so they both sort of have this powdery finish which is I'm assuming an asset on the eyes and the cheeks, but which may not be the most appealing or attractive on the lips if you don't like a very powdery matte formula. So I figured I'd just like throw that out there. I'm a person who I really enjoy a good matte formula. Like I love a good gloss, do not get me wrong. However, there is something about like a very crisp, beautiful matte lip or alternately like a very blotted down and soft matte lip that is infinitely and sort of immortally pretty to me. So both of these products are going to be kept for now. This one in more of like an interim purgatory stage and this one as a hell yes, 100% for sure keep. Now we can move on to the more berry tone section of my lipstick. So here's the deal. I've always found them super flattering on my skin tone and what generally ends up happening is for the first two months of fall, so September and October, I end up very much so obsessively wearing like brown tone and orangey lipsticks. However, come November and that like last bout of fall, I pretty much just obsessively wear berry tone lipsticks. If you ever see me in the month of November, nine times out of ten, I will be wearing a berry tone lip. So having said all of that, let's go through all of these colors. Now the first one that I have here, and this was a product that I like forgot I had during the beginning of my no buy year, this is the Bite Liquefied Lipstick in the shade Infuse. It's this third one down, and it's basically very very true to its name. It's a liquefied, pureed, smashed up lipstick. It's highly glossy, it's highly satiny, and I had initially bought this product because I'd hoped that I'd be able to kind of like blot it down, smear it out, smudge it a little bit with my fingers to get a very beautiful berry tone stain on my lips. Unfortunately, this is a really really odd formula and I 
highly dislike it. I don't even think Byte sells this anymore, like I think they might have discontinued this, and quite frankly I understand why, because this is a very very tacky and sticky formula. And I don't just mean like when it's applied to full opacity like this. Even with all of my best efforts to blot and smear and smudge this out, even when there was just a very very thin layer of it on my lips, my lips still felt really tacky and kind of goopy. But more than that, because this is just such a dark color, it didn't apply evenly. It was kind of streaky, it was kind of patchy, it would be much more intensely pigmented in one area than it would in another. It was just not good. I really did not enjoy using it. Of all of the products that Bite has come out with, I love a great many of them, but this is absolutely not one of them. Moreover, I've had this for a really, really long time, and all of Bite's products are like really, really natural and don't have preservatives and all of that kind of stuff. And so I'm pretty sure this is like way past its expiration and that it's gone off. Now, I've definitely kept products past their expiration date if they haven't like gone funky on me or anything, but this is absolutely not worth that trouble, so I'm gonna let it go. I think now that I just finished talking about this product, it's appropriate for me to talk about this one right here. So this is a product by Shuomura. It is their Tint in Balm lip color in Underground Adventure. It's part of a Mario collection that came out a while ago, so I bought like a very bright pink lipstick from that that I've shown previously on this channel, and I also bought this. On my hand, this is the third color from the bottom. So I think you can see that it actually bears quite a bit of resemblance to that Bite liquefied lipstick which is this guy up here. The Bite liquefied lipstick was a little bit more brown toned, this Shuomura one is a little more of like a true berry, but in terms of their depth and their glossiness, they're really quite similar. So what I've done is I've swatched this Tintin Balm at full opacity, but the way in which I actually wear it is the way that I discussed wanting to wear this. I tend to apply like a very small amount of color on my lips, and then I tend to use my fingers or just rub my lips together to sort of smear that color out, and the end result is this very sort of beautiful blotted down berry stain. I actually think I wore this in the very first video I ever made on my channel where I was discussing my no buy year. Of all of my berry tone lips, it's definitely my most used product because it's the one that is the most sort of like low maintenance and effortless for me. I low key, high key love the fact that it's from the Super Mario Brothers collab. So on multiple levels, it sparks a lot of joy and I'm definitely going to keep this and use this all the way up. So let us now move on to these final four lipsticks. This lipstick right here is actually one that, oh, I forgot to mention this product earlier on that list of things that were given to me after I finished filming the first round of these products. So one of my very dear friends got into graduate school earlier this year and she had to move a really long way in order to go to grad school. So before she did that, she went through her entire makeup collection and decluttered a whole bunch of it. And she knows that I've been sort of recently kind of overwhelmed with stuff. So she she was actually very selective about the things which she brought over for me to try because she thought I would really like them. She thought really carefully about like my makeup preferences, about the things I have been liking and disliking recently, and about the things that I tend to wear, and so she ended up giving me some sort of like choice key pieces of her collection that she didn't really get a lot of use out of but which she felt I would. So this Smashbox lipstick was one of them because my friend is actually really really similar to Hannah Louise Poston in that she really does not like a vampy berry toned lip. Right, Hannah's talked multiple times on her channel about how she doesn't like the way it looks on her, she thinks it kind of ages her, she's not really a big fan of that particular vibe or aesthetic, and my friend actually feels the same way. And because she sees me wear berry tone lipsticks so frequently, and because she sees how much I enjoyed them, she kind of bought this one time in a misguided attempt to make herself like berry tone lips as much as I do. <laughs> this is the Smashbox lipstick in Femme Fatale, and this is the most berry tone lipstick that a lipstick can be. It's the fourth lipstick down on my hand. It's a very, very beautiful purpley toned plum berry color. It's an absolutely stunning berry, and the exact kind of thing that my friend <laughs> 
hates on herself. So she literally bought the lipstick. You can see it looks almost unused. She wore it one time, was like, what was I thinking? Just because Prachi likes very toned lipsticks doesn't mean I'm going to like them. And then she never used it again. And so given the fact that I love berries, given the fact that she bought this lipstick because of me, she was like, I gotta declutter this to Prachi. You know, like I can't declutter this to anybody else. When I look at the lipstick colors on my hand, I think it's very, very clear to see that Femme Fatale is quite similar in tone to the lipstick right next to it. It just looks a little bit richer, a little bit deeper, in large part because it's matte and the lipstick next to it has a very slight sheen. So let's actually take a pause to discuss the lipstick shade that's right next to it on my hand, and that's this MAC lipstick in the shade Rebel. So Rebel actually looks much darker in the tube than it is on my hands. This is a satin finish lipstick from MAC, so it does actually have like a very slight sheen to it. It also, by the way, stains like crazy. So although it looks like a very beautiful, rich, purpley, berry pink when you wear it, after you remove it, and pretty much for like a full day after you remove it, it leaves a very, very hot pink stain on your lips. This lipstick was the very first MAC lipstick I ever bought. And as a person who got into makeup and beauty at around the time that the YouTube beauty community was first beginning to be established in the early 2010s, I remembered constantly going back and forth about like what my very first MAC lipstick color would be. What would be the one that when I finally saved up enough money that I could afford a MAC lipstick that I would end up buying? And the color that I had decided on was this. Rebel, because to me, back then, in like 2012 when I had just turned 18 years old, this purpley berry pink, this was the most extreme lipstick color I had ever seen in my life. Compared to the lipsticks I had seen everybody in my real life wear before, these very like neutral tone browns and pinks, compared to like the paltry two drugstore lipsticks I owned at that time, this Rebel by MAC was absolutely a wild color. It was truly a rebellion for me. After I bought this lipstick, I wore it obsessively. It has really strong sentimental value and memories associated with it. And I think most importantly, although there is like a large amount of nostalgia and memory and sentimentality associated with this lipstick, it is still a lipstick I wear all the time in the fall. <laughs> this is not something where it was like, oh, I love this when I was 18 and then I used this like a crazy person when I was like 18, 19, and now at age 25, like I've outgrown it. Like, no, no, no. I use this lipstick like all the time. By the way, it has still not gone off. Like MAC lipsticks are honestly some of the most like hardy lipsticks I have ever used. I've had many of them for years. None of them have visibly changed texture at all in their packaging. None of them have gone off in the scent. They all still smell like vanilla. Whatever preservatives they're using in MAC products, like bravo, this lipstick has lasted me for years with absolutely no diminishment in its performance and no adverse effects to my health. So this lipstick is a definite keep. And the intense similarities between these two colors, I don't really know how this is translating on camera in large part because the the fact that one is glossy and one is matte often tends to throw the camera for a loop in terms of perception of color. However, in person, honestly, these two look quite similar. This looks a little bit darker, and I do really appreciate that this has a matte finish, but realistically, they would tend to occupy the same role. And here, I just want to take a pause to discuss that I went back and forth a lot with these two lipsticks. And I realized that what I was doing is that I was trying to guilt trip myself into decluttering one of these. Somewhere inside my head, I was like, you can only have one. It doesn't make sense for you to have more than one. It's wasteful for you to have more than one. You're somehow a bad person if you have more than one. How can you say that you're part of an anti-consumerism movement if you have two such similar lipsticks? You know, you're constantly striving to be a minimalist Prachi and like it's not very minimalist for you to have two lipsticks that are so similar to each other. You need to get down to just one. When I sort of took a step back and I was like, what's happening here? <laughs> Why am I putting such undue pressure on myself that I'm guilt tripping myself into getting rid of one of two lipsticks? I realized like it was old perfectionist me sort of jumping out 
that I somehow think that there is a perfect way to be somebody who is anti-consumerism, that there is a perfect way in which to be a minimalist, that there is a perfect end result to doing a KonMari style declutter, that there is some sort of like upper limit to the amount of items that you can have. And that's basically a scam. The fundamental basis of both minimalism and the KonMari method is that it's highly personalized to you. So for minimalism, the idea is that you keep the things which add value to your life and remove the rest. The KonMari method is you keep the things which spark joy in your life and discard all of the rest. The key component there is the phrase, your life. It's personal to you your own joys, your preferences, your desires. And as much as I would actually call myself a minimalist in quite a few different aspects of my life, the reality is I'm a person who uses a lot of makeup and a lot of lipstick in particular. A really interesting lip color is a staple part of my signature everyday look. And so although I am aware of some sort of weird external pressure, which is like, you should only have like one of each type of a thing, like why are you having things that are so similar in color, blah, 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 all of this kind of stuff. When I actually stop, pause, take a step back and ask myself whether both of these spark the same amount of joy, whether both of these add value to my life and whether I wanna bring both of these into the future with me, the answer is yes. And I shouldn't be like kowtowing to some external idea of what is a valid or decent amount of stuff to have and then force myself to declutter something that I will then later regret because I have been down that road before. Like I've talked about this at length before on this channel, but I used to be in a very, very toxic pattern of trying to curate and declutter my collection to fit outside perceptions of what constitutes a curated or minimal collection. I was very bad at actually listening to myself and what it was I want out of my own makeup collection. And with this particular round of decluttering that I'm doing, I'm breaking free from that old pattern. And I'm very deliberately taking the time and energy and space to like listen to myself and what I like and what I think is a good amount of stuff to have that I feel comfortable with, that I enjoy having around me. And for me, that means keeping both of these and giving myself the space to not feel any guilt about that. So that was basically a long-winded way for me to say that both of these are staying. All right, so here are the last two items. This is the third MAC lipstick I think I ever bought, or maybe the second one, because what happened was I bought Rebel first. It was the one and only MAC lipstick I owned for a really long time. And then I bought the shades Ruby Woo, that bright classic retro matte red, and this particular shade of lipstick, Diva, at the exact same time. So Diva is this second to last lip color on my hands. It is a beautiful, rich, sort of wine red color. I wear this color all the time in the winter. I've worn this for like Indian weddings before, I've worn this for Christmas dinners, for Thanksgivings, like I'm constantly wearing this lip color to the point where three other women in my family have bought this shade of lipstick because of me. It gives me such an intense and immense amount of joy. And much like Rebel by MAC, this is a lipstick which has withstood years and years of my very insane decluttering process because it's a lipstick that I constantly come back to and use. So it's 100% gonna stay. That brings us to this last lipstick here. This is an Anastasia liquid lipstick in the shade Heathers. It is the absolute last one on my hands. And as you might be able to tell, it is by far the darkest of all of the lip colors. And here's the thing about this, I do not super duper enjoy the formula of this Anastasia liquid lipstick. I find that it's very, very drying. And I also find that of all of the liquid lipstick formulas I own, the Anastasia formula, as well as the one from ColourPop, are the hardest to build on themselves. So if, for example, I wear this lipstick in the morning and then I eat lunch and I find that like bits of it have worn off and then I wanna try and reapply a layer of this, it's really, really difficult to not make this look like crusty and patchy. And oftentimes I end up having to wipe off the vast majority of lipstick on my lip and reapply this in the middle of the day. So it's definitely like an annoying formula to work with. However, the 
annoyance that I feel around this formula. It's worth it for me for how pretty this color actually looks on my lips. I'm gonna see if I can link up in the cards my March favorites video, which is where I actually wore this lipstick last. It's a very, very beautiful, deep, rich oxblood color. When it comes to a truly beautiful, vampy lip, this is stunning. And I love, love, love wearing this in late fall and in winter. So it's not a perfect formula, but because it does look beautiful, even if the performance aspect of it isn't like the most stunning thing in the world, it's gonna stay for now. Okay, so the end result of the lipstick sort of decluttering portion of this video is that all of these lipsticks are definitely staying 100%. These three lipsticks are still in a sort of purgatory testing range, and this Bite Liquefied Lipstick in the shade Infuse is getting decluttered for sure. But you gotta be there for me too.